everyone, it's Matt along with Goo, and today we're going to talk about Corvus. Is he better than Fallen Angel? What's his strengths? What's his weaknesses? Stay tuned and find out. Alright, Corvus is a very interesting unit. It has some pretty powerful uh, abilities. Um, and let's just get right to them. Uh, the leadership effect spell damage plus 15% is a pretty top notch leadership effect. Uh, very, very useful for uh, spell teams, great for PvE and PvP, especially if a team is bringing a lot of 100% uh, dodge units. Uh, that's a great way to boost up your uh, overall power. Before uh, I talk about everything, else the one thing that i'd like to talk about is angelic reasoning and his perk uh his perk is a is a perk for the first 10 turns he nullifies any damage that's not 30 percent or more or actually over 30 percent of his hp uh and when i mean and it'll be maximum hp so if you do 29.99999% of his maximum HP, he, he will take zero damage. This is incredibly powerful in Arena where you already uh, got a 30% damage reduction and a little bit more uh, overall uh, damage uh, as well, or I should say damage reduction plus HP. Incredibly powerful, top-notch everything. But if you include that along with his first skill, which is Fallen Angel Halo, which reduces damage by 50% for the first turn, increases spell power and effect for three turns, which you should almost always use in Arena, all of a sudden now you're talking a 45% in, in theory, a 45, maybe even slightly higher uh, with the Arena uh, percent damage uh, that he would normally have taken initially, it's still 30% at that point. But if you uh, reduce damage by 50%, you even get another boost on top of that. and makes it incredibly, actually it would be 60% at that point of his HP, incredibly hard to damage and is a very fearsome foe in Arena. Second skill, Psycho Burst, large spell damage to an enemy and reduces spell resistance with a high probability of at least 60%. For three turns. Um, this, along with Double Kaswoosh, is his two major uh, attacking skills. Uh, the spell resistance is huge in PvE uh, because you actually pair Corvus with Jessica all the time. This is how a lot of strats for boss enemies are going to go from basically here on out. You use Corvus, that set up, use Corvus, set up Jessica. Jessica just absolutely destroys unit. Done. Um, and this is where he gets his superpower from. But I will say right now that he is not in the top tier. He is <coughs> a, in this uh, a very solid next tier unit. Uh, he is just short of the high tier. And I'll show some reasons why. Part of it is his damage a little bit. Uh, it does boost up. It does get there pretty fast. But... All in all, his damage is a little there because this other skill, Double Kaswoosh, his big damage is uh, inflicts two whoosh spell, or two hundred percent, sorry, whoosh spell damage to all enemies. is a very very powerful uh, attack, but it is uh, very specific to uh, whoosh, and Psycho Burst does good spell damage, but it's only to the one. Uh, he is. An important character in the game, but he is not like going to be the character that you absolutely have to have. Uh, characters like Jessica, Sorrow, Fallen Angel, Corvus. Those are the ones that are going to be the gotta, gotta, gotta have. This one is very, very, very nice to have. Um, first Awakening skill increases defense, movement, and spell resist for three turns on odd turns up to turn 10. Very, very nice. Um, the one thing is his agility is a little low compared to some other units. So in Arena, if you find a Corvus and you can attack it early, 
do so. Um, if you can kill it before, it can really start uh, going with like the Fallen Angel Halo or trick the uh, uh, AI to not have, not do the Fallen Angel Halo and instead focus entirely on just attacking you with either Psycho Burst or Double Kuswoosh. That would be the uh, better way because otherwise it just becomes an absolute uh, annoyance in Arena. Uh, second is Bang, fourth is Zap. Third one here, increases spell power and effect for three turns on odd turns up to ten. So if you fight a three Awakened Corvus, it will increase its defense, movement, spell resist, spell power, and effect for three turns on every odd turn up to ten. And along with its ability for angelic reason, that goes to uh, ten he is a can be and turns into an incredibly powerful and scary unit to go against, especially on turn three. Um, so killing him quickly is very, very important. But the frustrating for free to play people, he requires to be stronger than the people you're fighting against in order to really be able to use all of his skills to its fullest which basically means Corvus is definitely a pay-to-win type character because he needs basically that third heart to become ultra, ultra scary. Uh, the first one is very annoying. Three hearts becomes really, really powerful. On the last one, he gets an extra 100 max HP, which he actually does need. Um, his uh, 130 stats... 1200 HP that it does include the last 100. If you don't have that, he is actually, um, I would call on the medium to be, uh, to low end, and he could be as little as 840 uh, HP uh, at rank seven with just himself. And with that 30%, that really doesn't give that much uh, area for it to be super powerful. His MP though is pretty good at 536. It's around 450. 445, uh, 430 with uh, zero awakenings can use his really powerful skills a few times. Um, and his agility 455 is a little slower than the really powerful units in the game. This is where he can be defeated uh, quickly early on. His wisdom though is also very high, 476. His movement is two, but honestly that goes to three and four once uh, his, if you get him to the first awakening. Um, weight 65 and defense is okay at 351 but in all fairness you don't really care about the defense of Corvus you care about the max HP preferred weapon there are two but I will say fallen sword uh, right now uh, just because it can be used uh, and you can use the fallen sword to get HP which for Corvus, I think is more important than uh, actually using Double Kuswoosh and Cycle Burst. Um, my goal is, if I get Corvus, is to get three HP slots with that 45 HP, try to get into the 160 range. Um, agility is also can be very useful for Corvus to try to get him going first, uh, but personally, I think uh, just boosting his HP another 160 or so would be, I think, or up to really almost 200. So if it was 200, that 60 more HP, he gets the block automatically. I think that's just a little bit more important than the agility overall. Um, basically, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to have Corvus start all the way in the back, make it really, really hard for people to get to him. And that's how you can kind of counter the agility uh, low, especially if you have the high HP. Uh, uh, but let me, sorry, go back here. Spell power, gives spell power 4%, which is enough. Corvus isn't going to be your major damage user. He's going to be there to annoy. And in all honesty, as long as he's not weak against the units you're fighting against, he might not take any damage. And good, good, good attacking power with near invincibility is what his going to be his strengths on. But if Units are weak, have weaknesses against him. He can be mowed apart pretty quickly. 
Fallen Sword's going to be the Stract Expedition, DQ9. And once again, I'm going to be looking for HP. Others might be Agility uh, and the two skills. They're all pretty good, just to, kind of depends on how you want to play uh, with Corvus as Corvus. That, that weapon can do a lot of things. And personally, I think it's really, really powerful because of that. His learned skills, a lot of units I haven't been really saying, you know, you should be doing this and this. Corvus can actually really, really benefit from Blunt. Um, or someone else having Blunt on their ability. Um, otherwise, you're really not going to go through that. Other people say, well, if you've got whoosh, you should be using another skill like Crackle. Um, but in all honesty, I think you're going to be using his non-elemental attack to lower resistances uh, and then have other people finish him. Um, so you can use Blunt, you can use Crackle, or really, uh, if... Uh, because he's whoosh, like a zap or a zam would also be a very good magic. He might make sure it's magic damage. But all in all, uh, blunt only because that really, really helps him uh, become even more dangerous, especially in a one on one fight, which sometimes you might uh, be down to for him. And we're just going to go with the pros, cons, and pull here. The big one here is he can ignore damage that is less than 30% of max HP. Um, and with the Angel's Protection, that basically can be up to 45% for singular terms. Um, and, you know, basically on how you use him. He is very annoying in Arena. And with units uh, that don't affect his weaknesses... He can be nearly invincible, and that is a very powerful skill. Uh, in PvE, the really tough battles, unless if he is resistant to all their attacks, he will take damage and is a little less because usually their levels are in the 150s to 200 regions, uh, and you're just not going to be able to use his massive skill in that regards. But in Arena, that turns into a very powerful skill, and he is another PvE master in this game i think fallen angel corvus is better but still an absolute master um his reducing spell resistance though once again i know i've stated this before pairs incredibly well with jessica or even veronica if you don't have jessica uh and being able to uh, whittle down bosses from like most bosses usually have something 30 percent where they fully reheal or they summon 300 billion enemies uh, using that combo can really shorten those battles and make life a lot easier. His cons, his HP and defense, along with his agility, leave him potentially weak against strong and fast teams and can be destroyed fairly quickly, especially if they have the element resist, uh, using the right elements uh, to attack Corvus. But and I don't have it here. If he Corvus is generally stronger than the teams you're facing, he can uh, become your absorption tank and not die ever. Uh, but he is very pay to win. He is a character that needs to be ultra strong to absolutely shine. But he's also a character, the more you get of him, the more and more insanely powerful he becomes. Um, Corvus would probably be, is the still the strongest or second strongest, especially fully awakened in Japan, but he is pretty down the list uh, comparatively. I mean, he's still in the top 50%, uh, but he is down the list with zero and he, uh, zero hearts. And eh, he's still in the top 20 with uh, two hearts or one heart. Uh, but really, it's the three hearts and five uh, and you know five hearts where he becomes really really strong. So he is a pretty expensive unit. Um, and am I going to pull? Not super hard. Um, I am basically uh, running out of resources, but 
if if I get lucky, I might then go a little bit deeper. Uh, really, the real goal for PvP players is three hearts with Corvus. Uh, will be powerful enough to really do a lot of damage. And uh, basically can turn turn three into a clearing house, especially if the summable unit is Blood Mummy. Um, overall, an interesting unit because it can uh, poison and curse and reduce his and resistance as well. The other thing is he has slow. Uh, very personally interesting unit because uh, for A units, you're really looking for niche. He has some interesting niches. Uh, definitely wouldn't mind having a couple of him. His curse rate, success rate with 3rd and 5th awakening could increase greatly. Um, and the interesting thing is he is a slow unit with a movement of 2. But if it poison or curses, the next turn it will get 4 movement. And that is a pretty interesting ability uh, for Blood Mummy uh, as well. Especially since basically... It's first two attack or it's a uh, haunted breath, which you're pretty much going to be using for the most part for this. Uh, poisoning cursing is pretty strong overall. It's a pretty good one. Um, I personally would say you should add a, another elemental attack skill outside of Sam. Uh, uh, because its attack is actually pretty high at 522. It's a little frustrating that it's uh, breath damage for Haunted Breath instead of a physical attack. But uh, still, you're going to be using this to uh, make units uh, slow, poisoned, and cursed. You're not really looking for super damage. But having another a damage skill afterwards is pretty... Per so it's, it's a unit that could see uh, some uses uh, in some some battles just because it has some pretty interesting niche. Um, and Poison Curse are some pretty powerful uh, skills that you can try and use. So I hope you guys uh, enjoy this. Um, I'll be uploading this uh, fairly quickly. Please like and subscribe. You can also uh, watch me on twitch.tv slash uh, I play a lot of games, but I usually generally, I'm on 24-7 with Twitch, but I, when I am live, I usually put a time on my screen. Very happy to answer any questions you have about DQT uh, live and uh, give you the best of my ability to go through and uh, give you analysis when needed. So I hope you guys enjoy. I will see you later. Have a good day, everyone.